Hello friends. In this video, I am going to teach you about variables. First of all, I would like to introduce some terms. Let's take population. Population is a collection of individuals or collection of units. If you take this population, it has several individuals. And these are the individuals. So variables are features or characters of an individual which differ from individual to individual. So variables can be color, height, age, sex, etc. etc. If you take these two individuals, the one is black, other one is blue. So the color is the variable. Over here, one is shorter than the other. So height is the variable. Now I am going to introduce another term that is sample. So what sample? Actually sample is a subset of a population. Let's take this example. This is the population. So this population has several individuals. And if you take a few number of individuals or the subset of this population is known as a sample. If a researcher wants to measure the height of all of these individuals is a very difficult task. Instead, what he can do, he can measure the height of these individuals and he assumed that those heights represent the height of the population. Let's start with types of variables. The first one is discrete variable. The value of the discrete variable is obtained by counting. For an example, number of pens in a box, number of girls present in a class. The second variable is continuous variable. The value of the continuous variable is obtained by measuring. For an example, height of boys in a class or the weight of potato from field. Response and predict a variable I will explain in detail later. Some variables interact with other variables. For an example, response variable, whose variation depends on the another variable. Because of that, response variable is known as dependent variable. Next variable is predict variable. So predict variable influences or interacts with the response variable. And also, the researcher has a chance to change the predict variable. Because of that, Predictive variable is also known as independent variable. Now I am going to explain the effect of predictive variable on response variable using a small example. So Peter is a planter. He wants to investigate the effect of fertilizer on the potato yield. So he sown potato seeds uniformly over 10 by 10 meter large plot. Then he divided the large plot into 1 by 1 meter small plots. Now he has 100 small plots and he has divided them into 10 groups. So each group has 10 plots. Then he added a different amount of NPK fertilizer to each group as follows. So the first row shows you the group number and the second row shows you the fertilizer amount he added to each group. After 6 months, potato is harvested from each group and weight. The results of the experiment is as follows. So the first row shows you the group number and second one shows you the fertilizer amount and the third one shows you the potato yield per square meter. For example, group number one, he got three kilograms per square meter. In this experiment, potato yield is considered as response variable whereas the fertilizer amount applied is considered as predictive variable. So we are going to use the fertilizer amount data on x-axis and the potato yield data on the y-axis. So we plotted fertilizer amount applied on the x-axis whereas the potato yield on the y-axis. What you can see over here, when we increase the fertilizer amount, the potato yield increases. So, potato yields depends on the fertilizer amount. 
So the potato yield is the response variable, whereas the fertilizer amount is the independent variable. So in this video, you have learned few terms, population, samples, variables, in particular, response and predictive variables. Now you can comment, like and share this video among your friends and subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching.